our handy dandy pear deck for the week. Well, for the day, but since we only do this once a week, it's the same thing. Look at that, I like today's code, CCABC. That's real easy to remember. Confused carrots award broke carrots. Okay. So yeah, as always, go to joinpd.com and uh, put in the code. And uh, just in case you forgot, you have to exit full screen on Zoom and you wanna have Zoom on one tab, Pear Deck on the other. And if I need you to go back to Zoom to show something, I'll tell you. Otherwise, being on Pear Deck, you'll see everything. If you're on Zoom, you'll see everything. But I wanted people to start with, uh, I want you to draw me something. Actually, I, I, I was planning to have you draw something, but today on a class many of us Chimicum teachers are taking, we're, we're doing the same thing you are. Every week we join a Zoom and we do the same type of things you're doing here. We're learning too. And today they had us draw something. So they had us draw Batman. And uh, <laughs> I not only drew Batman, but I have Batman with me if you're looking at Zoom. So yeah, when they said, show us your drawing, I, I showed my action figure. I started to draw him, but I'd rather show the action figure than what I drew. But drawing on Pear Deck is very different. You could be a really good artist, but uh, having to draw with a mouse or a trackpad, it's very different. I don't know if any of you have the uh, those tablet things that you draw on so you can actually draw on a computer like you draw on paper. That's for graphic artists. So yeah, we got 11 of you connected. Awesome. I see a hand. Let me... Uh, I gotta find you because if you don't raise your hand on Zoom, then I have to scroll around to find you to unmute you. So Kane. Well, I'm clicking on unmute, but it's not unmuted. Why don't you type whatever you want to say in the chat? Because I keep clicking on unmute and it's not unmuting you. It's odd. Let me check the chat. All right, welcome. For those of you who just joined, uh, we are starting by opening up a new tab and going to Pear Deck. If you're in full screen, because whenever I share my screen, it puts you in full screen. You just go up to the top, you mouse over the control menu, and then you click on exit full screen. You want to have zoom on one tab and another tab for Pear Deck. And if you go to joinpd.com, go to joinpd.com, then you can put in the code, which is confused carrots, award broke carrots. So you got to be a broke carrot to get an award from a confused carrot. But I like CCABC. That sounds kind of cool. It's kind of catchy easy to remember. So I put it in the chat. And then uh, once you get on to Pear Deck, draw something, draw something cool. And if you're good, draw something beautiful. But if you're not good, just draw something cool. Because, you know, we might not all be super artistic in this way. We all get our arts in different ways. Because, you know, it's all in our brain. 
the artsy stuff and the logical thinky stuff. Those aren't very scientific terms, but it's okay. All right, so out of 16 of you, 15 have joined in, but since Kane and Keegan are together, maybe they're sharing one. So that means everybody's in potentially, which is fantastic. So I'm going to go ahead and close the join code so I could peek in at some of your drawings while you're drawing. <gasps> wow. Okay, these are good. <laughs> Meh. <laughs> yes, something cool, very literal. Oh yeah, guys, these are awesome. I am loving it. Oh yeah. <laughs> One of them there almost looked like Batman. I had to draw Batman this morning, so. All right, I'll give you, oh yeah, let me uh, set the timer. But first, I'm gonna hide that. All right, let's give you a minute to win it. Okay, not really win it, a minute to finish. Because yeah, I wanna give you a little more time to get those finalized because you're looking good. Okay, you got about 30 seconds to put finishing touches on your artwork. I love the draw feature in Pear Deck. That was a smart thing to do. All right, so uh, this is what we got. Look at the, I love that eye, looks good there. And there's a uh, Minecraft with a block. And of course, literal, somebody drew something cool, literally. And the Classcraft logo, very nice. I bet Classcraft would love that. Uh, and then we got a blam or a BLM, oh, Black Lives Matter. Excellent. I know, right? This is the time. This is the time to stop racism. I hear you. I'm there. I mean, come on. I'm Hispanic. I know what it's like. Uh, luckily, you know, I'm one of those lucky people who I think if I walk around, people might think I'm white. Unless I tell them my name is Alfonso Gonzalez. Then they're like, whoa, man, you're from somewhere else. Yeah, my parents are from Cuba. Uh, so I'm Hispanic. I'm a Latino all the way. And yeah, there is, uh, it's called microaggression and it's called implicit bias. People have it. You know, you look at somebody, you hear their name, you see their skin color, hair color, eye color, they look a certain way and you judge them. And if you think about it and go, wait, I can't judge this person until I get to know them. That's the way to live. But a lot of people don't do that, right? They just act and react. And the kind of hatred we've been seeing, it's ugly, folks. So thank you for BLM. We need some of that kind of love now. All righty. So speaking of love, I don't know if you knew this, but I might have put it on Classcraft Monday. Or maybe I forgot. Oops. Uh, but Monday, this past Monday, We've been having a lot of these cool holiday type things was World Oceans Day. Um, you know, we had Earth Day, 
we've got a lot of things, you know, we, we've got COVID-19, we've got racism and police killing people for no reason or for stupid reasons. And we also, on top of that, have all this climate change going on and our oceans. You know, for those of you that have done ocean acidification, you know our oceans are in trouble. And that's why we have Earth Day and we have World Oceans Day. So you can see there, I put some reasons that I want you to reflect on. Well, why do you think it's important for us to, it shouldn't just be once a year, but at least once a year, we should stop and say, well, what's so special about oceans? You know, they're just there, they're huge. You might need them when you want to go across to another country, but why are they there? Why do we celebrate them? And I know some of you might be thinking, oh, I want to pick more than one. You know what? Pick your one favorite. That's what I want you to do, your favorite. And five of you have not responded, so I'll give you five more seconds, one second for each one, and four, and three, and two, and one, I'm gonna lock your responses. Hey, four of you didn't respond, what's up with that? But for those of you who responded, wow, check this out. So the top reason, four of you said because they provide food for over one billion people. Uh, you might remember, oh, wait, no, that's ocean, ocean acidification. If you did ocean acidification, one of the videos says that one in seven people on our planet rely on the ocean for its food source. So yeah, that's over 1 billion people. So that's a big one. In second place, because they are an important part of the water cycle. Well, yeah, without the oceans, lakes, rivers, yeah, the water cycle would struggle. So we need a lot of the water we get fresh is evaporated from the ocean because it covers most of our planet. Good one, makes sense. Then we just got a tie for 70% of the oxygen we breathe comes from the plankton that's photosynthesizing in the ocean. Hello, we need that oxygen to breathe. Now remember, of our air, only like 22% is oxygen. But of that 22%, most of it comes from plankton photosynthesizing in the ocean. Yeah, and then Two people said because they are responsible for most of Earth's weather. <laughs> now, if you're not too happy with the weather, that's probably why that didn't get a lot of votes. Um, and I'm surprised C, because they absorb more C CO2 than all the Earth's trees. That's because there's more plankton taking in CO2 and the ocean absorbing it uh, than we have trees because there's way more ocean than trees. But maybe that one didn't get votes because it's also bad. So I hear you. So there you go. Happy belated World Oceans Day. Plus, you know, the oceans are all over the world, right? Um, now here in Chimicum, our Ocean Guardian School, we don't technically work with the ocean, but when you work with your watershed and keep Chimicum Creek healthy and clean and stop littering, uh, are you helping the ocean? If you can't see my head because you're on Pear Deck, I was nodding yes, exuberantly, because everything we do in our watershed can protect our ocean. I know many of you wanted to solve the, the plastic pollution into the ocean problem by um, stopping it at the rivers. That's, that was really cool. So you know that's how to do it. Um, we just have to get together and do it. By the way, microplastic madness, Great movie, right? Loved it. So this uh, session today is being recorded like I always do, but I couldn't record last week's because the movie, I didn't, you know, I was sworn to not record it. I had to sign all sorts of things, legal stuff. Um, so yeah, today I got a big uh, science Zoom for you and it focuses all on water quality. By today, you should get enough information to finish that water quality quest assignment right there. Because uh, I just need you to get the basics. You know, we, we've got one week left next week. And in order you, for you to do your final project post, I just want you to have enough information to do it. So 
right now. Six of you have not responded to this. If you're not on the pair deck, feel free to move over to the pair deck now. And go ahead and respond. Waiting for Anya, Avery, Kane, Caden, and Addison to respond. All right. Four left. Three left. Two. All right. Addison, just waiting on you. I'm going to log in three, two, one. Don't know what happened to Addison, but all right, let's see where we are at. Five people are working on climate change. Cool. I know there's still some people who are working on Think Like a Scientist, and I message them saying, hurry up. What are you waiting for? Um, ooh, we got two people done with climate change. Five working on water quality. Nice. Two done. Rock stars. Way to go. All right, so that's where we're at. Well, got to tell you, uh, here's what's going to happen. So, like I said, I'm going to give you enough information today together with the last Zoom on dissolved oxygen and temperature to get you your water quality notes. You'll make graphs of the data because once you learn what that data means, then you're ready to make a conclusion about how Chimicum Creek is doing. And that's, that's the science part there. That's, that's really big. Um, now next week, you probably heard last week of school. I know, sad. Uh, but here's what we're gonna do. Thursday, you may have seen, we're doing this huge drive. You're, your parents are gonna drive. They got CCP from 1.30 to 2.30, Chimicum Elementary, is from two to three. We're gonna be out there, the teachers. You and your parents are just gonna drive by so we can wave because we haven't seen you in so long, except for these little Zoom video, little bits of you uh, on small squares. You know, that's, that's not really you, that's just a video of you, which is nice. It's nice to see you, but we wanna wave goodbye. So you don't get out of your cars, you just drive and we wave goodbye. Uh, so Thursday and Friday, Mr. Brennan and I, we're not gonna have our regularly scheduled Zoom on those days. What we're gonna do is we're gonna join Ms. Berg on Monday at noon, and we're gonna do a scavenger hunt. We're gonna be at school, we're gonna have our masks to be safe, um, and we're gonna put you into teams for each teacher, and we're gonna have a, a, a list of items, and you're gonna send us places to scavenger hunt. The teacher that finds the most, that team wins, but you're in charge. You gotta tell us where to go. So that's gonna be uh, really fun. So Monday, we want everybody there. Tell your friends, spread the word, because Monday is the final sixth grade teacher face-to-face -face like this Zoom stuff. Because yeah, if I were to do mine on Thursday, you'd have to watch it and then rush out the door if you have a, a sibling at CCP. I didn't wanna do that to you. I'll still do eSports. Thursday because we do that at nine in the morning. So that's super early. So that's happening next week. Okay. Remember that, write it down, tell your parents, tell your siblings. Um, your parents on Blooms should have gotten two invitations. I really want you guys to go. There's one for students to meet your seventh grade teachers. Yeah. And there's one for parents where they're going to tell your parents, Hey, here's what you need to expect. OSPI just put out today in September, we're gonna meet in school face-to-face -face with masks on and, and all the protective gear. So we get to meet face-to-face, -face. I'm so excited. So remember that, these are cool things. I'm gonna post it on Google Classroom and Classcraft so you don't forget. We're gonna let your parents know, we already did. Tell your parents, it's on Blooms. Everything good is there. All right, so. Um, water quality. Let me help you get this done. I'm going to point to these videos again. I, I just rearranged the first one and I added a, hey, here's where you need to do your notes video. So right now on your screen, you have a link to the playlist. At the bottom of the playlist are videos where if you really want to learn a lot about DO, pH, uh, turbidity, flow rate, and temperature, watch those. 
You can also read it for yourself, but watch them if you listen well and learn better that way, because uh, I'm teaching you how to do all that. So start with the videos when you get to water quality, okay? That's your best bet. How you like my waders? Pretty cool, huh? Uh, yeah, and the creek was looking very nice there. It was fun. Yeah, I like going to the creek. So quick review. Two weeks ago, I, I taught you the basics of dissolved oxygen. When we get into water quality, it's really about chemistry. Um, so you learn some basic chemistry when you do water quality and when you do water quality uh, analysis. So we learned la two weeks ago that, okay, you know water is H2O, two hydrogens, one oxygen, bound together to make one water molecule. Now that oxygen is not what fish breathe. The fish can't pull that oxygen away from the water, right? So then where does this O2 or oxygen that fish and humans breathe, because we breathe the same oxygen, only ours is in the air. Oh, that was good. I love breathing. Uh, you should try it. Everybody breathe. Are you breathing? All of you. Thank you. I saw Riley breathe. Thank you. Make sure you breathe, because when you forget, oh, don't worry about forgetting. Your nervous system does it automatically. <laughs> Thank goodness, right? Sometimes you forget to breathe, and it's freaky. Um, but fish, they can't breathe the stuff from the air. You know that. Any of you who go fishing, you take them out, they're going to die. But in the water, they're still breathing the same oxygen we're breathing, only it got dissolved. So looking at 10 of you have not responded on the question. But here's how we're doing so far. Uh, let me minimize that. Five of you said fish breathe oxygen from the air that dissolves into water. Yes. That's the one. No, they don't breathe it from the H2O because the O is in oxygen. Remember, they can't pull that out. And fish don't breathe oxygen. Eh. Yes, they do. They breathe. They're animals, so they have to breathe oxygen. So C is the correct answer. And you're going to get a takeaway of this. Ah, there we go. 14 of you got it right. Um, I'm going to publish your takeaway so you'll get a Google Doc in your shared with me. Google Drive with all this, so you'll have it. Um, but yeah, looking back here, this, let me get my annotation tool. This uh, right here is an example of an oxygen molecule. Here's another one, and here's another one. The oxygen molecules are mixed in between the water molecules and then the fish pass that water through their gills and they just pull out the oxygen molecules and and that goes into their bloodstream just like with us only we pull the oxygen out of the air uh, so pretty cool the difference there and you notice the h2o's they're kind of connected and i'm going to talk more about that when i teach you about ph in a few minutes here but it's h h o and um, we've got a lot of them connected. That's an important thing in the chemistry of water. So I'll get back to that. But you see the O's together? That's how oxygen is in the air too. So this is great review, people. Great review. Okay. Now another review is, uh, I shared this two weeks ago. This is, it's called diffusion from the atmosphere. Air hits water, and the oxygen literally goes into the water in between the water molecules. Well, sadly, we also learned that carbon dioxide does that too. And although oxygen is good in the water, it doesn't do any harm. It gives oxygen to all the marine animals. Uh, carbon dioxide does do some harm. And, and I, I'm going to spoil it. It's ocean acidification. And you'll learn more when you do that quest. Um, let me see how you're doing on your questions. So two people said dissolved oxygen is different from the oxygen we breathe. Not really. No. And nobody picked C because it's not toxic to fish. They need it to live, just like us. But I'm seeing a lot of people choose B. Oxygen dissolves into the water right from the air. 
That is correct. That is the one. Good job, the 10 of you who chose it. 11, yes. Now we got it all right. Ha, I love it when that happens. And that's what this picture shows. And don't forget, some oxygen gets into the water from photosynthesis from plants and plankton. Because plankton, there's plankton that are plants and there's plankton that are animals. Just so you get some vocabulary, phytoplankton are plant plankton, zooplankton is animal plankton. I know, for those of you who love vocabulary. Okay, ooh, remember the DO levels. If you're looking at a chart like this one, mind you, there's a whole bunch of them. This gives you an idea of how much, or really how little, of this dissolved oxygen fish need to live. We survive great in an atmosphere with 22% oxygen. About 80% of it is, is nitrogen. We don't breathe that, it just goes in and out. Uh, but fish, look at salmon, six milligrams per liter. That's six O2 molecules in every million H2O molecules. Mind blowing, right? Uh, so for some reason, that's enough. But to put it into perspective, a million molecules of water is such a tiny drop, we can't even see it. I mean, when you put a drop of water from like a, a, a dropper, that is millions and millions and millions of water molecules. So it's, it's too small for us to really comprehend. And it looks like here, five of you have said benthic macroinvertebrates can survive in waters with only one or two milligrams per liter or parts per million of DO. You remembered. Way to go. I know it's a little misleading because on the picture it says bacteria, but two weeks ago, great memory there, I, I, I taught you that the benthic macros Ryan from North Olympic Salmon Coalition taught us about. That's all they need because they're tiny bugs. Yes, you all got it right now. So yeah, trout and salmon need six or seven milligrams per liter or PPM, parts per million, to live, thrive, and survive. And then last thing I taught two weeks ago was and temperature together because the temperature affects everything. And we, we don't live in a tropical area where the water's warm. I grew up in Miami, Florida. When we would go to Miami Beach, the ocean water there was about 70 degrees. Oh, it's so delicious. I, I miss those oceans. Now you go out here in the ocean. I moved to California. Water there is cold. Up here, it's even colder. Oh my goodness. But in a river, what do we want? Ooh, five of you remembered. Colder water can hold more DO. By the way, that's what this graph shows. Might be a little confusing, that's why you have to read the labels. Oxygen content is highest where temperature is closer to zero degrees Celsius, which is about 32 degrees, well, not about, zero degrees Celsius, 32 degrees Fahrenheit. So yes, colder waters where we can have the most dissolved oxygen, and it's what salmon and trout thrive in. Uh, so one person chose B, yeah, water temperature does affect DO, it affects it a lot. So that person should fix that. All right, so now we're gonna start with the new content, all right? pH is, is a bit more complicated uh, than DO and temperature. So I wanted to take some good time to give you the basics. And again, these are just the basics. So pH really tells about acids and bases, acidity. Now, most of us have seen a car battery or a regular battery, and you've probably heard that the liquid inside a car battery is, uh, uh, it'll burn you. It's a strong acid. Battery acid, we hear that all the time. You know, if a battery pops or explodes, you know, don't get burned uh, with the stuff on there because, you know, that'll hurt you. Then we've got water. Water is great 
we needed to live. You know, we, we can only survive a few minutes without oxygen and we can only survive a few days and, and uncomfortable days without water. So oxygen and water are two of the first things you need to survive on any planet or on a desert island. Then the third is food and then shelter, right? So water, I'm going to come back to because there's an opposite to an acid and it's called a base or alkaline. And bleach is an example. Bleach, just as strong as, as or close to as strong as battery acid, um, but it's not the same thing. It's the exact opposite. So the way it works is acids are on one side, like battery acids, bleach, and, and stuff like that is on the other side. It's the exact opposite. And those are called bases and it's alkaline. Right in the middle is water, pure water. And that's the basics of pH. You go from an acid to water to a base. All right. And I see people are taking their notes on there. And whatever you write right now on Pear Deck, it's going to come to you, to your Google Drive as a takeaway. At the end of our session today, I will publish your takeaway so you get a Google document with all your notes. And you can turn in those notes to complete the Water Quality Quest assignment. Yes, that's the bonus you get for being here because you all who come here every week, you deserve it. You're rock stars. And I appreciate you being here because I miss you. And at least I get to see some of you uh, at, these, at these meetings. All right, so 11 of you haven't got, um, and you'll still get the slides. You just won't have any notes. So you can take your notes right on that Google Doc yourself. So I hope you have a good memory. Plus I record this. You can watch the recording. I know, I'm providing a lot of stuff for you. That is the one good thing that's come out of this quarantine is I'm providing everything for you on my YouTube channel. It's all there. Hundreds and hundreds of hours. Okay, well, maybe hundreds and hundreds of minutes, but a lot of hours. All right, so I'm going to move on. Acid water base. Yeah, some of you've got some notes there. Okay, now let's take a look at this. Back to the chemistry of a water molecule. Um, so we know H2O is one water molecule. That's the smallest part of water. You can't get any smaller than that. If you break off a, a hydrogen from water, it's no longer water. And if you notice on this picture, H, if in a hydrogen were to split off from the O and the H, the other H, it has what's called a positive charge. And an atom with a positive or negative charge. Folks, if you ever heard the word ion, that's what an ion is. It's just an element that has lost or gained an electron and therefore it has a positive or negative charge. So the hydrogen, when it left its buddy hydrogen and its oxygen, it uh, lost an electron, so now it has a positive charge. And that's called positive hydrogen. Wait a minute. PH, positive hydrogen. That's one of the meanings of pH. I say one because there's others. I've heard it called the potential of hydrogen. I've heard it called the power of hydrogen. Uh, but positive hydrogen is uh, uh, a good one. Yeah, and, and Ethan wrote that a cation is a positive ion with a positive charge, I mean. So H positive is called uh, positive hydrogen. Now the OH, it gained an electron, so it now has a um, negative charge. So it's an anion, and we call that a hydroxide, okay? So you've got water molecule, H2O is just water. But if you get hydrogens with positive charge added to it, it changes the water. It's no longer just pure water. And if you have a negative hydroxide and you get more of those, it changes the water. 
But if you have an equal amount of positive hydrogens and negative hydroxides, guess what you get when you put them together? H2O. And that's what the formula there is. H plus plus OH negative equals a neutral H2O. So guess what that means? This is kind of weird. If you've got a strong acid and an equally strong base and you combine them, they cancel each other out. It's called neutralize. It is awesome stuff. Uh, basically, if you're getting burned by a strong acid on, on a, your hand or your finger or something, you put water on it, it doesn't stop the burning. But if you put an equal, has to be equal, base on it, it will cancel it out because the positive hydrogens and the negative hydroxides will make water. It's great to know this chemistry when you work with uh, acids and bases. So that is the most important thing uh, uh, to know, to understand what pH is, because it's a complex chemistry here. And the mathematics in there, for those of you who love math, is really, it's logarithmic. And, and I'll show you that in a moment, but I'm gonna let you catch up with your notes here, because I see a lot of people writing down some good stuff. I'll give you another second, and I'm gonna move on to the next slide. But you can just continue your notes on the next one. All right, check this out. So this is what I mean by logarithmic. Um, in the middle, see that number seven in the middle? It says one to one neutral. Here's what that means. And here's why water is in the middle. Water, pure water, has a balance of positive hydrogens and negative hydroxides which when they bond together, because positives and negatives attract, it's just like north and south pole of a magnet, uh, they, they make H2O. That's why water has no acidity or alkalinity. But when you go to a creek or a river or a lake or a pond or the ocean, there's more stuff in there than just water, right? You've got all these salts and, and soil and animals, and they add things to the water that either increases the positive hydrogen or increases the negative hydroxide. And here's where it gets complex fun. Um, if you have more positive hydrogens, the number goes down from seven to six to five to four, all the way to zero. Zero are the strongest acids. But the reason it's logarithmic is because to go from a six to a five makes it 10 times more acidic. So a five is 10 times more acidic than a six. That's what the 10 to the negative five means. A four is 10 times more acidic than a five, but 10 times 10 is what? I know, it's easy, it's 100. A four is 100 times more acidic than a six. Mind blown. And it works the same going the other way. Now, if you're water, like if you're in the ocean, it's got more negative hydroxides, uh, then it goes up from seven to eight to nine, all the way to 14. 14 is the highest it goes, that's the strongest base. So I got a question. Does that mean that in the graph or photo of the H and OH that it bounces the chemicals together to make it neutral? Something like that. Yeah. Once you have a, a balance of positive hydrogens and negative hydroxides, it's neutral because they make water. No acid, no base. And remember, if I use the word alkaline, it means the same thing as base, but they have two words for it. Uh, and the same thing here. A, a, a liquid with a pH of eight, if, if you get another one with a pH of nine, the nine is 10 times more basic or alkaline than the eight. And the 10, you guessed it, is 100 times more alkaline than the eight. And it just keeps going. You multiply it by 10 every time you go up one number. So if you go up by tenths, you're only going up by one. See where math plays a huge part in this? So chemistry is very heavy into math too. Uh, so those of you who enjoy math and science, you're gonna love chemistry and physics. 
as, as you go into high school and college. But those are the important things there. Remember, water is neutral. It has a seven. If you see anything with a pH of seven, you know it's pure water. It's got nothing else in it to mess it up. Or at least it has no positive hydrogens and no negative hydroxides, which are the OH. So that's, that's the basics there. Let's go to the next slide, because this slide's really cool. I want to give you some examples of common acids and bases. Believe it or not, vinegar and lemon juice are strong acids. And unless you have a cut, they don't burn you. So they're not that bad as they show in the movies. Uh, in order to put your hand in a vat of acid and have it totally burned completely, you got to have super strong uh, uh, acids. I mean, stronger than battery acid, which I don't even know what that is. Uh, but it's some strong stuff. Same thing with all the way to 14. Drain cleaner has to be able to dissolve hair and fat. Sorry for the grossness, but that's what gets clogged in your shower drains. And, and your kitchen drain, it's food, food stuff. So the, the fats accumulate and they clog your sink. And so you have to put a strong base in there to dissolve it. So yeah. It dissolves it. But look, bleach is very strong. It's a 13. Ammonia is an 11. Now, watch this cool thing. So stomach acid, it's a one, right? It has to dissolve your food so you can digest it. So if you have an upset stomach, oh, it's, it's too much acid. It's, it's burning. You put uh, uh, Pepto or Tums, those stomach tablets, they have to be the opposite of acidic to cancel out that acid and make you feel better. So there's the science behind how Pepto-Bismol makes you feel better and, and the Tums. So stomach tablets are a 10 or stomach acid is a one. They don't want a 13 because then you'll neutralize all your stomach acid and that's not good. Uh, so it can't be an equal and cancel out all your stomach acid. Baking soda is, is basic, and so is your blood. Yeah, blood has a pH of about eight, which is about where the oceans are. I know we share a pH with the oceans. Um, water is a seven, and ocean water is a little bit uh, uh, alkaline or basic, more than seven. Creek water, river, fresh water tends to be closer to acidic. It's, it's around six something, but so is milk and coffee. It's acidic. That's why, you know, it stains your teeth and all that stuff, tomatoes. So yeah, this is the best way to learn about pH is put it, the numbers together with stuff, you know, and I love this graphic. It's really well made. And I see some great notes there. Nice job. You guys who are taking notes because this is going to get your work done for you. Now, this one might be a little confusing, um, but it, it compares the pHs to plants and animals. I want to focus on the black boxes. If you look at where fish die, if it's too acidic or too alkaline, you're just going to kill the fish, straight up, kill them. Um, and it looks like anything less than three is too acidic. Sorry, the fish are going to die. Yeah cool graph. Anything more than 11, sorry, the fish are gonna die. Now humans can get into waters with a pH from 4 to 10 and it might irritate our skin, but it won't kill us. And you see their stream, look at the box for stream. It goes from about 7 to 6, 6 to 7, because you can have streams that have pretty fresh water. And then crabs, snails, and mussels can go anywhere from a seven to a nine. Uh, fish can go anywhere from a six and a half to almost a nine, uh, especially if they're ocean fish or like salmon. Look at salmon. They start in our creek, which is freshwater, which is around six to seven. And then they go to the estuary where their gills get used to salt water. And then when their gills are finished doing that, uh, they go out to sea and um, 
then they're in more basic or alkaline um, waters because the ocean is supposed to be basic. It's not supposed to be acidic, which is why ocean acidification is bad. It's causing a lot of <laughs> nice, you turn white. No, you don't turn white, you just die. You don't want to drink anything uh, uh, in the high or lows, except, you know, we drink lemon juice pure. You can drink it. You can drink vinegar, but ammonia and bleach and, and this thing called lye, don't drink those. Seriously. They will kill you. Those are poison. Um, but the acids they show here are, are um, safe. Now, if you're doing hydrochloric acid, like you get in a science class, or sulfuric acid, or nitric acid, your teacher will teach you, don't drink it, don't breathe it, just use it with safety goggles and, and everything. Um, it, it, the alkalinity is poison, literally poison. That's how bleach kills you. And salmon, when they're in an estuary where it's got fresh water and salt water mixed, their body starts getting used to uh, the salt water. Same thing when they come back to lay their eggs, their body starts getting used to the fresh water. It just does it. It's, it their cells know how to do it. And yeah, Calliope mentioned lye is used to make soap right on. They also used to use lye to straighten curly hair because it literally uh, burns your hair straight. <laughs> the only way I could think of saying it. Um, it's super strong. So yeah, nasty stuff. And look, plants can survive in um, a little bit acidic, but super basic. And plants, you know, you talk to the farmers aren't here, they can tell you the pH of soil to grow what type of food. That's a whole nother thing uh, that you can learn from our farms here, especially organic farming, which we have a lot in Chimicum. So this graphic has a lot of stuff to teach you, and it's a good one. And look, rain, its precipitation should be about a five, but if it mixes with carbon dioxide, which makes carbonic acid like ocean acidification, same thing, it's acid rain, and that's bad. And it uh, looks like acid rain can get pretty acidic if you're in a city with a lot of air pollution. Ah, hard to breathe, the rain is bad, kills things, Ouch. All right, your notes are looking good. I'm gonna move on. Um, and that was it. That's all I got for pH. Turbidity is the other one you're gonna learn about. Is super uh, simple. Turbidity is just how cloudy the water is. That's it. And this picture is really good because water has some type of sediment or soil or rocks or sand or something that it's on top of. And water moves. And as water moves, it looses up these sediments. And if they're fine particles like clay and, and, and things like that, they will float in the water, making it hard to see. And imagine if you're a fish swimming through that, you get into water that's super cloudy, you're gonna be like, whoa, where am I going? I get lost. And if it gets really bad, it could kill fish. Super high turbidity can kill fish. Um, but I'm talking, that's, that's really bad. Chimicum Creek is so clear. If you ever look at Chimicum Creek, it's kind of yellowish, right? That's natural from the woody debris. Anytime trees fall in there, uh, there's this stuff in the, in the tree, in the bark, called tannins and it just dissolves into the water and gives it that color. It's totally safe, totally fine. Um, but yeah, that's what I want you to know about turbidity. It's how cloudy the water is and how much stuff the water picks up. And it's usually dissolved solids. Because if you see rocks in there, it'll eventually settle to the bottom of the creek. Uh, but if they're fine particles, they will stay and cloud up the water for much longer. And imagine, pollution, chemicals, uh, things like that, then they cloudy up the water uh, really bad. Drinking wood particles, yeah, you're drinking the tannins, but there's a lot of reasons why you don't wanna drink creek water. And the biggest reason is the microscopic organisms that will make you sick. If you ever watch any survival shows on TV, 
if they don't boil the water, so many of them get sick, even if it's running water. So yeah, my recommendation, if you go swimming in Chimicum Creek, don't drink it, don't swallow it, be careful. Now here's uh, some examples of turbid water. Low turbidity is super clear, right? The one that's super clear is like a turbidity of zero. We used to even get negative because I don't think our sensor was, it was so clear it was giving us a negative number. Um, as you get more cloudy, it's measure, we measure it in NTUs. By the time you get up to the high turbidity murky, you're in the hundreds of NTUs. So anything less than 100 NTUs is clear enough that the fish are, are gonna be fine. They'll be able to maneuver and navigate through the water and not die or get hurt. They'll find their food and they'll be able to breathe. And that's what we want for our creek. We want the fish when they're babies, you know, they just hatch and they're alvins with their little uh, egg sac, yolk sac still attached, uh, that they're not gonna die or suffer. And when they start swimming around hunting benthic macroinvertebrates, um, whoops, then uh, we want them to be able to find them. So that's why turbidity is so important. And um, that's what I want you to get from that one. So what you need to write down is anything really under 100 NTUs uh, is good. And for those of you who've been graphing your data, uh, NTUs are nephilometric turbidity units. Nephilometric. I don't even know what that means. I just know it because we've been doing it for so many years. Uh, but yeah, nephilometric turbidity unit. There's other units, um, but nephilometric is the one we use. All right, hang in there, folks. We're almost done. I just got flow rate few more slides and then we're done. But stay with me, don't leave, we're almost done. All right, now on to flow rate. It's beautiful, isn't it? Um, so flow rate is that simple. How much water's flowing through a given area at any time. Flow rate is gonna change, it could change from day to day. Uh, if you go for a whole bunch of stretch without uh, rain, the flow rate's gonna go down. So that is, whoops, sorry. Uh, so the more rain you get clearly, the higher flow rate you're gonna get, the less rain, the less flow. And it also depends on whether the creek is fed from mountain water and snow or our creek is spring fed. So it comes from the ground. It, there's no mountains in Chimicum because we're a valley. So that's why Chimicum Creek uh, is it, it's just got water all year round, which is really cool. So that's what flow rate is all about. And I got some important details that are, are just nice to know. So for those of you taking notes, I'm gonna move on, sorry. Okay, so looking at these two pictures, which one of these two streams would you expect to have a higher flow rate or a higher stream flow? All right, so let's take a look here. I'm seeing more people choosing B, which totally makes sense, right? Um, I agree. Uh, the one that's wider, well, here's what happens. As you water rushes, and it gets wider, it has more area to fill in, so it naturally slows down. And there's a lot of science behind what happens when you take all this water and make it go through a smaller diameter. Well, that's how water hoses uh, can spray water so far. If you make it go through a smaller diameter tube, the flow rate is gonna increase, it's gonna go faster and stronger. And so yes, B, on this picture, it's got, it's, it's narrower and the water's rushing, so it's going faster. That means more water goes through there every second. So keep that in mind. The narrower it is, 
the more, uh, the faster it's going to go and the more water goes through. Narrower, faster, more water. The wider, the slower. It might still be a lot of water because it's wider, but it's going slower. All right. All right, I'm going to move to the next. Um, so what we have here, this is how I got the flow rate data you're going to be working with if you haven't done the graphing yet. And that was used this way. There's a propeller at the end of that. And when you put it in the water, the current of the water flowing through turns the propeller. And what we get is the speed of the water. So in order to calculate stream flow, you got to know how fast the water is going. OK, so it's speed. All right, so write that down. Speed. You figure out the speed with a propeller device, because that's important to calculate flow rate. You have to get the speed. All right, people are typing. Thank you. Yes, propeller, right on. Yeah, flow rate sensor. Yes, yes. All right, then put speed. Many of you got that. Excellent. Uh, finish up because I'm moving to the next slide. Now, this picture is what I had to do next to get you uh, a stream flow. So I have the speed. And over um, down here, they put velocity. But it's not really velocity because I didn't um, write the direction. Remember what we learned in class. Speed and direction is velocity. Speed without direction is just speed. But if you multiply the velocity in, uh, I, I used feet per second. Actually, I did meters per second. But meters per second. And you multiply that by the area, which is squared. Meters times square meters is cubic meters, and that gives you volume. So if I measure how long the creek is and about how deep it is, and it's, so it's not a perfect rectangle, I had to do some math to figure out the uh, uh, average area, then that's how I was able to give you data telling you how many gallons of water per second were going through the creek at the time I tested. Yep. So it's the speed times the area of the water will give you the flow rate. So you can tell if it's got a bigger area or a faster speed, it's got a higher stream flow. I know. Pretty amazing, right? Now, I know some of you said you had to go early. So I'm going to um, go through the last two slides, and then I'll come back to the quizzes. So those of you that can stay the whole time, I got a quizzes for you. It's got the same questions as two weeks ago, plus new ones on flow rate, turbidity, and pH. We'll see how you do there. Yeah. All right. So we're going to come back to this. But first, I wanted to encourage those of you who have a school laptop, the district is telling families, keep it over the summer. Keep working. Mr. Brennan, Ms. Berg, and I, we're going to be checking Google Classroom and Classcraft. We'll check it throughout the summer. Not every day, mind you, but we will be available to answer your questions um, and check your assignments. We're here for you, and we want to continue to be here because we know no matter how much work you did, it just, you, you missed out on stuff. So we want to give you as great an experience as we can. So um, stay, keep your laptop, keep working, do as much as you want. And do the fun stuff, because some of you never got to some of the fun stuff. I'll, I, I guess I'll reopen those. Uh, so that's, that's my big announcement for laptops. And those of you who have your own, keep working. You miss stuff. Catch up. And then for those of you who didn't see my um, latest and greatest uh, virtual classroom with Mr. Spock and BB-8, I know, I love that Mr. Spock. And who doesn't love BB-8? Am I right? Am I right? Uh, 
if you haven't done this, oh my goodness, I love it. You get to, uh, you know how I do the Google form surveys. You can tell me how's class going for you, how you doing, what can I do better? This does it too, but you're chatting with an artificial intelligence called Hubert. Oh my goodness, how many of you have done it? I know a few of you have, because I got your responses. It's totally fun. You can chat with it and talk to it like it's uh, uh, an artificial intelligence, and it'll ask you follow-up questions to get you to tell me what you thought of the class. Um, so if you click on Mr. Spock or around him, you'll give me feedback about what would you recommend about sixth grade science to this year's fifth graders? What should they look forward to? Um, and then of course, BB-8 is, how was this quarter? I know it was tough for a lot of kids, um, but as always, some of you found the secret sauce. Uh, and I, I, I want your secret, you know, like that website I put together with all your advice. Um, tell us what worked for you so we can teach it to, to each other next year. Um, and what didn't work for you? What could be better because, you know, not, not to freak you out or anything, but if we get another spike of COVID-19, we might have to go for another month or so of this. Uh, we don't know, we just don't know. And that's why we gotta be ready for anything. And I want you all to be successful in seventh grade and I wanna know how to help. Um, and we can tell the seventh grade teachers, hey, this is what works for this year's kids. Um, plus, you guys were one of the best classes I've ever worked with. So you've got mad skills. You really do. Uh, don't let that go to your head, but keep working hard because you're good enough. So stay with it. Stay the course. Um, and let me know what worked, what could be better. Some of the things we could change, some we can't. But if I can change it, and if seventh grade teachers can change it, we will. We will. All right? Okay, so back up. Ready or not? Let me see where your hands are. Um, oh, let me watch. Yeah, all of them. All right, we got hands everywhere. Dun, 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 dun. For this week's quizzes. Um, and that's it. Once we're done with the quiz, we'll say goodbye. And um, Monday, You'll have all three teachers doing a scavenger hunt. So that's pretty cool. All right, I'm gonna lock your screen. So pick your, the one you really feel in three, two, one. Someone feels like a Q. Oh, a lot of you are ready. Way to go. All right, so today's quizzes is on joinmyquiz.com, code 020967. Let's see how you do. So yeah, we'll do the quizzes and then we'll say goodbye. All right, Logan was the first. Yeah, let me put it in the chat room in case, you know, something happens and you're like, I can't see the screen. Oh man, every time I type, it's like, thinks I'm somewhere else. Go to joinmyquiz.com. The code is zero two zero nine six seven. Did I get that right? Zero two zero nine six seven. Yeah, that looks right. So it's on the chat if I start and you're like, I don't know and I can't see. We've got six people in the room. Oh, it's not a room, it's a quiz. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna start it because nobody else has gone in in a while. Still, get set, and quizzes!
Ethan in the lead with 2,800 points. Deegan is right behind him. And Nigel has just stolen the lead from them with 3,470. Oh, I'm glad. It looks like some of the questions you're missing, which means, okay, there's room to learn. Uh, Ethan just got three in a row. He's on fire again, and he retook the lead with 3,710. Anya just got three in a row. Way to go. All right. Ooh, ooh, Nigel and Ethan, they're battling it out. But Deegan and Carter are still in it. Oh, Logan just shot up. Yeah, this is exciting to watch. All right. <laughs> strong lead with 9,130. Fabulous. Seven in a row. That is uh, very well done. And don't forget, I put, uh, it's not this exact same quiz. This one we're playing live, but I put the homework one up on Google Classroom and you can retake it as much as you want because it's about having fun while you're learning this stuff. And the more you learn this stuff, this is all information you can use on your final blog post uh, so you can get all the learning that you can done for sixth grade science. I really don't want anybody missing out on stuff. That's why we're going to be letting you work all summer and checking your work. So yeah, oh my goodness, Ethan has taken the lead again and Logan's got a strong third, Deegan in fourth, and Panina coming up to fifth. Way to go. All right, Ethan's got 11 questions there. He's getting close to the finish line. Logan is two. Nigel is two. People are almost done. <laughs> you know, I was just thinking, I want to survey sixth graders and find out between Kahoot, Gimkit, and Quizzes, which one's the favorite? Because I think I like Gimkit more than Kahoot. Maybe even a little more than Quizzes. I don't know. Quizzes is cool, but Gimkit was so much fun. I enjoyed playing with you guys. <laughs> Ethan with 14,375 and Nigel with 14,320. Very good. And Logan, Logan, you've got third with 12,245. Deegan doing well with 11,830, but he's still got, looks like, uh, I don't know, maybe one question, two questions. Ooh, two questions. Benina's almost done. Carter's almost done. Anya still has a few. All right, well, while you guys uh, finish up there, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and uh, I'm gonna unmute so we can say our goodbyes. And some of you are still muted, so if you wanna unmute yourself, feel free. And then I'll finish the Pear Deck. Thank you for staying with me this long. <laughs>